Hello, this is Lorena, and I'm on a journey to self-acceptance. My video is primarily an update regarding this journey and how I'm doing in the present. Because trust me, a lot has happened since I started my YouTube channel. Or to be more specific, uploading videos to it. This channel has been around longer than I've actually used it, you know? And I wanted to take the time to reflect on how things have changed since I started this channel and where I think the channel may be headed in the future. Uh, I'm definitely going to be making more Duel Links videos, so, um, spoiler. But anyway, I've gone through a lot. I've discovered a lot about myself, and I'm sure I will discover more as the year progresses. As I enter year two of me playing Duel Links and probably not much else, but there is one problem that I am still plagued by, and it is my creative blockage. I still haven't overcome that. That thing is... I'm probably going to reach a decade of that problem because I can't stop playing this game. But I do think this game has helped me in a lot of ways. Particularly when it comes to what the hell do I do with this channel? Apparently, it didn't take me long before I decided to make an account. I don't know when I actually made it, but my first video for the links was uploaded on August 21st. You know, I was going to look something up before I started this video. I didn't, though, for some reason. I messed up. Okay, well, anyway, there's not really much to say in that regard really I'm just saying that I mean I was curious like the 21st huh interesting did that start off Virgo season <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna look that up I I forgot like whenever you get to like um, th that's just whenever you get to or whenever it's around the 21st the 22nd the 23rd Around that range of time, I no longer know for sure if you're, a if you're this sun sign or that sun sign. And it's actually also an issue when it comes around um, the 19th and the 20th as well. It's usually around the 24th when I can actually tell you reliably what your sun sign is without looking it up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look this up real, real quick. Um, I don't want to lose this, so I have to participate in this duel. Uh, anyway, like I said, I was interested in when Virgo season starts, so I guess I'll just look that up real quick. Uh, I, I misspelled it. I misspelled it again. Why can I not spell simple names anymore? All right, anyway, I, I, um, I just know that I've been through a lot as the years have, as the year has progressed. Why did I choose that move? That was a disgusting idea. A anyway, uh, I'm gonna fix it. Wait a minute, he summoned nothing? <laughs> what? Come on, Quattro, seriously. Well... I know that when I started out on YouTube, I thought this was a terrible idea, and I just, I, I didn't really think that it was a good idea to be on YouTube, and to be, to be honest, I still don't think it's the best idea, because I know the hell that many content creators have gone through. I have been subscribed to many of these people. And I've seen many of my favorite channels get banned and deleted unfairly because YouTube is YouTube and it's easy to abuse the copyright system on this site. And now, admittedly, I do realize that there is a lot about the system that I may not understand and things that are like this for a reason, but why? 
I'm just curious why. I don't know. But for some reason, to... Hold on a second. I'm looking up when Brooklyn... What? Alright, you know what? I'm gonna look this up. No, no, not like that. Oh my god. Well, this is a disaster because I'm supposed to have Chrome closed when I'm playing this. Guys, give me a second while I look some shit up. Uh, nothing's going to happen on screen, by the way. I'm just gonna leave it there. But, this is supposed to be a one-year review of me being on YouTube. And I think that the fact that I'm speaking louder is a good thing. Because in my first video, it was like... I don't know if people could hear me. I mean, you probably could, but... The initial hesitation, and the fact that I thought this was a terrible idea, you could clearly hear that in my first video. And it quickly went away as I continued to play Doinks. Honestly, it went away pretty fast when I started playing Doinks. It's definitely interesting that I say that. And now, as I... Now, the reason that I want to know exactly what which zodiac sign it was when i started this channel is uh, i just like astrology that's it Th that is the only reason i just like astrology that's it i have no other reason that is all <laughs> A anyway uh, i'm just going to say that it doesn't really matter but i did get a bit uh Last year, I had to leave my ex, and it was, it was terrible. It was very, very terrible, because I didn't want to do that. It was impulse, it was an impulse decision that I made because I had to leave. But I didn't want to, so there was, I just, I cried a lot. And I wasn't sure what to do with my life, so I decided on a whim to start a YouTube channel. It felt like a very bad idea, not going to lie. But it seems like it has helped me a lot. I just feel like all the content creators that I have known for the... I just feel like I have known content creators for a while, but I haven't been one on YouTube, like myself, so I, I feel like I, I don't quite, I, I don't quite understand exactly why I would decide to join them. I don't know, but for some reason I decided that was a good idea. And I do think that it has helped me significantly to in fact do that. But, again, eventually, I'm going to be in hell just like everyone else. <laughs> yeah, just like everyone else. Okay, now, uh... I'm looking at the time. Okay. So, apparently, it was still in... The sun was still in Leo when I... When I started... Wait a minute. This is the wrong date. I picked the wrong date. What the hell? Give me, wait a minute. No. And now you guys have to understand. I love astrology. And that's why I hated when they stopped with the birthdays for the Yu-Gi-Oh cast. I'm just like, no, <laughs> don't stop. No, why? I, I I need to know their birthdays. Canon, please. Come, come on, guys, don't make me head cat in this. <laughs> Seriously, it would be a bad idea. <laughs> a bad idea. Alright, well. Anyway. The reason that I love astrology so much is because I just. I, I just. I think it's so complex. Uh. Why am I. Oh my god! You guys don't understand! I, I, I love astrology. I love it so much! I, I, I mean, this isn't what the video was supposed to be about, though. 
Oh my god. Well, while I'm trying to fix it, while I'm trying to fix things, I suppose it's useful to explain how astrologically some of this shit may fit into my decision to make a YouTube channel. <laughs> I currently have Uranus. Yes, I am pronouncing it like that, though I guess I could pronounce it the way that I learned it. Because, quite frankly, that is the better pronunciation. I don't know why the English language uh, wants, wants it to be different. Come on, come on, America. Stop being an... Stop. Seriously. Get a sense of humor. Keep it. Like, you made me learn this shit. Just don't walk back on the pronunciation. <laughs> I don't think they've actually walked back on the pronunciation, I'm just making that up. But some people do change how they some people have changed how they've pronounced it. And I assume that part of that is because of the pronunciation. And just how inappropriate it sounds. And I kind of get it, but also what the hell? Seriously. Okay, hold on. Uh, so, I've got Uranus in Taurus, conjunct my Taurus sun. And a lot of people probably don't know what this means. Well, oh, I actually made an event chart for this. A chart where I just, oh. I actually went to the trouble of looking up when I created my first video on YouTube. And I found the timestamp and I plugged that in. Okay. So the sun sign was in Leo and the ascendant was... Wait a minute. Most people don't know what I'm talking about. Can I at least speak some English. Anyway, when it comes to astrology, I tend to have this problem a lot. Now, I am not a professional by any means, but I do think that I'm a bit deeper into it than just a standard casual. I mean, I like it so much. It's a special interest of mine. And I just really like it a lot. And now, to really understand the situation here, I believe that my decision to start a YouTube channel is somewhat influenced by Uranus in my sixth house. It is currently transiting my sixth house, to clarify. And what that means is there is some disruption in my daily life. There are some changes to my daily life. Things are being shaken up. They're not quite the most stable. Especially when Uranus is in a sign like Taurus. Taurus is a zodiac sign that doesn't like to change. And you guys are probably able to see how this is indeed the case. Uh, across the hundreds of YouTube videos of me doing nothing but playing Jaden's cards. Yes, I, I know, it's kind of weird, but that's exactly how things are at the moment. Alright, well, it, I have this event chart, so I guess I'll just do a solar return of that. Yeah, solar return isn't really, isn't really something that's easy to interpret for an event, but, you know... Since I'm doing a one-year review, it is inter it is important to mention that, well, I'm doing a one-year review of my time on YouTube, not just what I've been through as I've, as I've continued to upload. Okay, so, the sun is, in fact, in Leo right now. I mean, I assume it's still in Leo. I mean, the sun is actually positioned in a location where, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's still in Leo. No, wait a minute. Actually, maybe it's... Okay, you know what? This is stupid. <laughs> anyway, it's interesting that the sun is in Leo because I absolutely... 
uh, you know what? Can I stop talking gibberish? <laughs> A anyway. Just in general, Uranus is associated with technological developments. And as I said, the things that are being disrupted and shaking and shaken up, it's not a stable planet. It's a planet that brings change, and that's often not something that just anyone and everyone is okay with. <laughs> Which, you know, makes sense considering I'm a Taurus and I don't really like change. <laughs> Which is why I was initially hesitant to start a YouTube channel, but there would have been a lot less hesitation if YouTube treated its content creators with more respect, just saying. And I also think that my decision to start a YouTube channel has something to do with my Saturn return. <laughs> because, I mean, it, that's going on in the background as Saturn begins to wrap up its uh, final degrees in Aquarius. Which is the which is very significant because in my natal chart, Uranus, I mean Saturn, is in Aquarius, which is basically what a Saturn return is. Saturn returns to the zodiac sign it was in at the time of your birth, and it generally occurs around the age of the. Uh, Roughly age 28 to 30, roughly around that time frame, and and I got hit with this shit hard, right before Saturn was officially in Aquarius to stay. Yeah, that that was difficult indeed. So as I've gone through YouTube and I've come to learn some things about my videos and how I want things to be. I've just overall come to an, a bigger understanding of what exactly the impact is as far as this channel goes. Like, how has it changed me? How have I grown from having this channel? And things like that. And now I'm going to be honest here and say that I don't really know how much of this is uh, because of the game, because I, I, I don't know. The game has had an interesting effect on me, and I do think that because of my closeness to the franchise that has played a large role in my development so far. <laughs> And yeah, I do think that it sucks that, you know, I have to just deal with all of this shit outside of playing this game, but I think the biggest problem I'm actually concerned with is getting over my creative block in the first place. And actually following through with some of these ideas I claim to have, but I'm not doing anything with. And now I, I know that it's taking me a while to follow through with those, but in all fairness, it's just very difficult right now because of everything I, I'm dealing with. And also, uh, social security, you didn't help at all. You made things so much worse. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do not appreciate what they said to me. Well, not necessarily to me, but to my mother. I just, I feel like they should respect that my grandmother left a will and let me have what my grandmother wanted me to have. Seriously, I didn't have much of an emotional connection with her. So it's kind of nice to have something that is left behind by her. I didn't really have a chance to properly grieve over her either. Because I went through so much bullshit shortly after her death. And 
I just really appreciate that she actually left me something in her will. And being unable to use it in the way that I'd like is just... Why? Why Why put these limitations on me? It's not like she gave me a billion bucks. I, I mean, seriously. What she gave me isn't really going to last very long, so why the problem with it? Social, se social security, you're you're on my shit list. And I de I know I depend on social security to make my to make my uh to be stable, to be mentally stable. I depend on social security's healthcare coverage. This doesn't mean I want to be depending on it. It just means that. General, that's generally where I am in life. I have to depend on a system I actually hate. Now, I know that some people can make it work, but as things begin to become more chaotic in this country, I think being on Social Security is going to become more and more unrealistic. Uh, for example, I don't really know how I'm going to deal with the rising prices in food and stuff. Like, for, like, you know, emergencies happen for the disabled too. We can't even start a savings account for crying out loud. Are you serious? Yes, Social Security is serious. It doesn't let people on its... Pro it doesn't let people with, with Social Security... It doesn't let people like me have a savings account, so I can't just be financially responsible. I have to use the money that is given to me, and I know I need it, but Social Security, there are months where I could afford to, you know, put, a, put away a bit of extra money just so in the future I've got something if I need it. Social Security does not give a shit about the disabled. I learned the extent of that this year. When it had a problem with my grandmother's trust. And for a while that really pissed me off and it still does. Anyway, uh, this video is going to be a bit longer than usual because it's a one year review. Do you expect a one-year review to last uh, as long as most of these videos? I respectfully hope that you don't because there is a lot that I have to cover. I already complained about social security so I can, I, I can mark that off. But I think that something inside of me broke and snapped when they gave that- when they called my gun- they called my mom about that, and I think something inside of me broke when I learned exactly what that was all about. How I can't just use the trust however I want. And I have to be dependent on what little they give me. I felt like it was a case of the disabled isn't allowed to have a good life. Okay, thanks for making me feel like worthless garbage, Social Security. I swear, you're awful. Seriously. No, no, I did a tarot reading about how to reverse my anhedonia, and I drew the Five of Swords, and I sat there crying my eyes out. Why? Because I kind of thought the answer was nothing you can do can ever can reverse it right now. Nothing. But uh, but I think actually there is. I don't think that's actually what it's saying. Because if that is what it was saying, well, uh, I I I think that it would be very weird to draw death as a clarification card. Death it doesn't mean things stay the same. And also, death isn't literal as much as uh, my dark, my darkness may want. No, don't give me what I want. I think I would cry if it happened. But just saying, if it was literal, I think that in the short term, I wouldn't feel much guilt. For a while, uh, you know, 
I think it would only last like five minutes before I started to feel guilty. <laughs> but yeah, I think it means that I have to change what gave me Antidonia to begin with. And basically, I still have Antidonia because some of those habits are still there. <laughs> As a result of how Social Security no, wait, it wasn't Social Security this time. Okay, as a result of how I responded to that flash drive situation and how it got corrupted, those files and all that, yeah, my response there kind of makes it quite obvious that, yes, I do, in fact, have issues that haven't been resolved that are related to social- uh, that are related to why I have anhedonia in the first place. By the way, I developed anhedonia sh not shortly after they gave me a letter saying that they couldn't cover some of my medications. <laughs> I wanted to get off those medications by the end of the year, and because I thought I couldn't, that accelerated my development of anhedonia. And now, I do believe that I would have gotten it regardless of... I believe I would have gotten it no matter what. I don't think the system is to blame here, even though I would love to blame it for things. <laughs> I love blaming this terrible system in the United States, you know? It feels fun to blame it for shit that's actually ruining life. Anyway, I would just like to mention that I just, I, I've never felt like people really cared about me <laughs> in the sense that I can, can, that I can live on after my parents pass away. And my Saturn return is highlighting, is highlighting some of those fears. And how, you may be asking? By how it started. Enter the pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic. It started there. And also, this still didn't last as long as I wanted it to. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this... This weird obsession with you fell is still creeping me out. I don't even know what is- wh Why am I obsessed with you, Belle? Like, wh what is going on with my brain to give me this obsession? <laughs> like, is it just because I relate or something else? Because I've never experienced this before. <laughs> it, it's kind of weird. It, it's disturbing, but also... Whatever, I can't control it. It's there. <laughs> anyway, I I will have to continue. I, I do think that July 4th was a turning point in my health. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting date. And a terrible one. <laughs> because I felt anything but free on that day. I mean, I have to be honest. I just didn't really feel like I was... I, I felt like I felt like in this country I, I just don't have as much freedom as the United States likes to brag it has. The United States brags about its freedom. Bullshit. I felt like I was not free. The fireworks gave me a headache. I blamed someone for giving it to me that I, I mean, giving it to me, what? Okay, anyway, first off, on July 4th, I was, I, I was experiencing a very, a very painful migraine, and I was also nauseous. Yeah, that was bad. So, that was definitely a changing point, but... I don't really know if it was my sister that actually made me feel nauseous. I just blamed her because it was kind of convenient. And also, I know she's affected me on a psychological level. 
it's not like it would be out of the ordinary to say that maybe she affected me like that. But I actually do not think that she's at fault anymore. But I absolutely hated those fireworks. I hated, I hated them so much. And yeah, I will hold it against, yeah, I, I, I just, the, it was so loud. But since I, but since then, I have, I have come to realize what probably, hold on a second. Okay, I see. Um, I, I think I made a mistake. Anyway, I'm just thinking that the actual problem had more to do with my breathing than anything else. Now, why would that cause a, now why would that be the issue? Well, I'm thinking that I probably wasn't getting enough oxygen to my brain and that caused the nausea instead. But that definitely doesn't mean that what my sister is doing to me is okay. I think she still needs to work on some shit. Because my reptilian brain is still functional. I've learned a lot about the reptilian brain, but in a way, that's... I definitely know that she's not necessarily at fault for what happened to me anymore. And now, am I going to say that she's done a lot of shit to deserve being blamed? Yes, she did. She does deserve to be blamed for that because she has impacted my health negatively. And I don't think this is a debate, really. But Social Security actually did worse this year, as far as I'm concerned, because I am doing my best with what little I've got to work with. I don't have a lot of what other people have. I don't have the skills that other people have. I'm different. In some ways, for th in some ways, this isn't a bad thing. In others, I wish I wasn't different in those ways. Like you know, the fact I have anhedonia, and I wish I could just reverse it entirely. But yes, part of that does involve changing my, uh, changing the wiring of my brain. I would assume, and not feeding into what gave it to me in the first place, which was the whole. Ne which was a lot of negativity and a lot of self-limitations and a lot of things that the system does that really, they don't want you to be in a position of power. They want you to be uh, in, in a position where you can't really do shit about your current circumstances. And I'm pretty sure they care they care very little about the disabled, so if, 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 I, if I died, Social Security would not give two shits. But obviously, I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to live! So I don't understand why they're giving me so much trouble. But yeah, that's just... They don't care about the disabled. And I'm affected by that damage. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts so much. Anyway. I also have to say that while I played this game, it it's just taken me back to my childhood. And to be honest, um, the only series that actually aired during my childhood were... Uh, were uh, the first three. A DM, a GX, and some of 5Ds. I became an adult during the airing of 5Ds, so yeah. But that doesn't mean that my inner child isn't still very, very attached heavily to this franchise, because it is. I know that information because of some very 
interesting experiences I've had lately since starting this channel. Like saying I'm going to like saying I lose even though the duel hasn't ended yet. But then losing the duel right afterward. Okay, sure. Well, it, it was definitely an interesting time moment, to be, to be sure. But I, I believe that this franchise is where a lot of my inner child went when it came to actually being a child. <laughs> You know, and that actually fits quite well with my Mercury and Aries. And just to translate, Mercury and Aries is said to be uh, very competitive. Uh, I mean, in fifth house, it's considered to be a competitive kind of placement. And Yu-Gi-Oh! is competitive, so it, it, it falls in line there. Also, Sora, can you just, can you just lose? <laughs> oh my god. I know that I have changed a lot, but July 4th was definitely a weird day, but, you know, in terms of how things have been going with the nausea, I believe the breathing exercises have really helped in that regard, because since learning what actually caused it, I think I understand now how to deal with those experiences. But I have a lot of spiritual things going on, and I, I've, I've been seeing someone for Reiki, and it's considered a pseudoscience, but I give no shit. I mean, it's helped me a lot, I believe, because it's helped align my chakras, and I think that's good, considering what I'm dealing with. I am dealing with a lot of energetic activity in my chakras. And it is very important that I work with my chakras in a way that is very, very appropriate. As in, I shouldn't mess up the way that some people do. Because I swear there are people that have no respect for how chakras work. Just say. And yeah, I don't really think I know that much about chakras, so that's why I need the Reiki professional to help me get them properly aligned. And as of now, why I think this franchise was worth bringing up as something that really changed, that was really a big part of my, my inner child and all that, well, I, I think that this franchise is a big clue to how I reverse my anhedonia. As in, I want to believe things, but I can't because of how reality is. But then I really think about it. I really think about it. If my... If how I function... If my beliefs were what were supposed to help, if it came down to people that believe things in the sense that I, okay, trust me, uh, I can do words. If it came down to wh what people like me believe, humanity would make no progress at all. So in order to believe that there is a future worth worth living for, you have to have hope that there is a better future. And I really am not an optimist that can just be like, oh yeah, the, the future is definitely good. I can't really say that. But I can say that I don't think being a pessimist about it is going to help either. <laughs> because you need hope in order to create any kind of meaningful change. In order to address a problem, you need to believe the problem can actually be fixed, which is where a lot of the problems come in. And not everyone believes that things can change. And because of this, and because of this, it's making things not change. 
<laughs> which is bad if you know you want a better future and you want things to be good for everyone. So I think it's a good idea to sort of have some idealism in my personality. Maybe some things that don't entirely make sense to the majority of the population. Because it's really important for me to to understand why certain things are, are a thing, you know? I, I think that it would be better for everyone if we started to have hope instead of just being like, oh, we're screwed. And that isn't going to help anyone, okay? I, I know, but it's also hard for me to actually accept that. That's where, that, that, this is part of where changing my mindset comes in and not fueling what gave me anhedonia in the first place. I, I, um, got anhedonia by being too pessimistic and negative. That's why it was able to escalate into abuse. Because I was so negative and I wasn't very respectful toward myself. So it really, really boils down to changing how I think about things, even if I think that things are likely to stay as they are. Not necessarily the case. That's not always true. Really, it's not. It's just not always true. Now, as much as I say this, I would just like to be honest and say that it's not something I can just change. But I think that the hopeful messages from this franchise is a good place to start. As far as change goes. And as far as reversing my anhedonia. And it, it's a pretty good change, I think. But obviously, I don't just believe things blindly, because that's not the kind of personality I have. But this duel is taking forever, I can't even believe it's still going on. Anyway, anything else for this one year review? Yeah, um, I, I've covered the, the July 4th stuff. I haven't, okay, uh, I'm covering the tarot stuff right now. I've actually changed in a lot of ways. Yeah, I've definitely changed. And in some ways for the better, I would say. Wait, what? Um, okay, did I make something up? Did I mess up? Uh, uh what? I did not mean to do that. Okay, um, I stole his trap. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Alright, anyway. I, I feel like I, I should have a bit more hope in my personality. Even if I don't quite believe it, I think it would be good for humanity. Because a lot of us are thinking we're screwed. That's not how you fix the situation. I'm just saying, I, I think I would know. I think I would know as someone that has an unfortunate condition that makes me unable to have fun in the same way as everyone else. I think I would know. <laughs> I think I would know. And now again, this video is a bit longer because of what I'm doing. I'm reviewing a year. Although, I didn't have to do all that astrology stuff, but I, I think that it does explain in a less weird way, or a weird way, what, it depends how you look at it. It's, it's just something that I can go back to, to understand what I'm dealing with and why I'm going through some of this shit. But yes, um... I'm going through some changes when it comes to how I view myself and a lot of those changes come from the fact that 
I've been going through so much and I think I'm finally starting to hit a point where I just don't give a shit anymore. You know, I'm just at that point where I don't know if I give a shit anymore because it may be dangerous to give too much of a shit. And I do think that part of me is still definitely, I, I'm still, I'm still anchored to old habits because old habits change, old habits die hard, man. In any case, uh, to reverse my anhedonia, I think it's very important that I embrace beliefs that other people may think aren't realistic and maybe even dumb. It, it doesn't matter what people think about those beliefs because to reverse anhedonia, I have to do shit that I may not necessarily think means anything. Seriously, guys, most people in the population aren't at risk for developing it. So they will never know the kinds of shit that I deal with. And I do not wish that pain on anyone, not even my worst enemies. Not even the worst people on the planet. It's a terrible thing to go through and it can really destroy your life. And the fact that mine is partial and I can enjoy some things to some degree and extent, I think that's a good thing. I think that I'm making progress toward reversing it. And now, as far as how I'm, ch how I'm changing in general, well, I think I'm starting to feel more empowered. And I... And I wouldn't say this as in, I feel more empowered because I believe some of the shit I'm saying, but more like I'm feeling more empowered because if I don't, I might be kind of screwed. You know? Also, I'm just tired of feeling like shit. I'm tired of feeling like I don't have power. I can't do shit. I'm tired of that crap. <laughs> I'm tired of thinking things just based on what's realistic and what isn't. How do you know what's realistic? Humans drive themselves insane. I, I don't think we know anything about what's realistic when we can barely treat each other correctly. And when I say correctly, we have no respect for each other. None. Absolutely none. So, yeah, I, I really don't think that, I really just don't think that humanity is in any position to criticize in any, to, to any extent. Uh, no, I am part of humanity, as I know, but at the same time, I've also seen a lot of people talk about their anhedonia like they've lost what made them human. Because a lot of what being human is like is, well, basically, you enjoy things. You do things that bring you pleasure. And if you can't experience pleasure, that can quickly take away from you feeling like you're a human. It's really bad and not good for, for you to feel like that. But it's definitely how some people with anhedonia feel. They just don't really feel like they... They don't really feel like they've got any humanity left. They've lost it. They've lost everything. Because that's generally what anhedonia does. It ruins your life. It takes away everything. And the fact it hasn't done that for me is just a testament to how differently I think compared to the average person. And now, does this mean that I am better than the average person? Oh, hell no. Hell no. The average person can survive better than me. I would not insult anyone ever. But I do think that it is very important that humanity... As a species, we learn to 
I treat each other better. And we stop looking at other people like they're like they're not as good as we are. Like, we shouldn't have a superiority complex when it comes to people in minority groups. I think that's bad, and I think that's, I think that's just making everything worse for everyone. I, I think humanity would be better off if we just had a sense of respect for everyone. For everyone that actually deserves it, because there are people that really just don't have a conscience at all. And I would love to show some mercy to those people, but they don't give a shit about me. And they don't give a shit about the lives they're ruining. So, exactly why should I feel bad about maybe thinking they don't deserve as much mercy? I mean, they're ruining lives everywhere. It's disgusting. But in any case, I want to give myself a reason to feel good about myself. And obviously, I think that a good place to start is not feeling like shit because I don't have the capabilities that everyone else does. I don't need to have the capabilities of the average person to have value. I don't. I can have value as my own person. It's not really something that a lot of people value because, I mean, they look at people that are disabled and think that they're not good. They think they're well, people have varying opinions of the disabled, really. I can't really say one way or the other what people think, but some people just really make you feel like shit. And I'm here to just be like, yeah, people really are like shit sometimes. And that's not good. And I think that it's good for humanity if I start to try challenging some of these so-called that's life philosophies. Like working yourself to death at a job you hate, that doesn't respect your mental health or physical health, that doesn't respect your right to freedom of, of expression, and you know, doesn't let you have free time or a life. Seriously, I, I think there are things we're missing in modern life now because work is taking up so many people's time. That's not good. That's bad. And overall, I think that a lot of things that I don't actually believe, it might be worth trying to start believing that shit because it might be better for my mental health and also it might be better for everyone else's mental health if you know there are some people going around maybe challenging some of this negativity going around besides i'm not going to fix my anhedonia by thinking we're screwed and that doesn't fix anhedonia that just makes it worse I mean, in the long term, it would definitely make things worse. So, let me get to the last topic of where things have changed. I haven't gone over this topic much, but I think that my niche as a YouTuber really falls in line with me being a soul bonder. I think that I've got a lot of promise when it comes to having content like that on this channel. And now, a lot of you probably don't know what a soul binder is because I haven't actually gone through the effort of explaining this in a way that I believe it should be explained. And I know that I've slacked a bit in this department and I do hope that in the coming year I address that. But I think that's where my main niche is, and probably where I'm most likely to have unique content as opposed to content that pretty much a lot of other YouTubers have already covered. 
And now I do realize that, you know, other YouTubers cover this content, and I believe I cover it differently, but well, that doesn't mean that no one else has covered this. I mean, really. I'm not that... I'm not... I'm not dumb. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people play these games. Yeah. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have played this game on YouTube, and they've got plenty of videos about them playing it. But I play it differently because of how I am. And now, as a soul bonder, it's also worth mentioning that I have also changed in terms of what I'm like as a soul bonder as well. I don't know if I want to go into super detail about that at the moment, but let's just say that there are some things about my soul bonderness that I probably should acknowledge that I was very uncomfortable acknowledging a long time ago, but I am now ready to actually acknowledge it instead of ignoring it. And quite frankly, I, I, I just feel like it's hard sometimes, you know? And when things change and you don't know if people will accept you because you've changed, and you're not really the kind of person that the majority of people will take seriously. I'm generally not that type of person. I think most people will probably think that the fact I'm a soul bonder makes me sound like I'm that shit. And if I go more in depth about this, as I'm sure I will in the coming months and years, I'm sure there'll be more people that think that I'm that shit. But, you know, that's not really my problem. My problem that I have to deal with is I know that I have a life and I know I want to develop meaningful human connections. Do I do that by lying to people? Hell no, I don't. If I want real friends, I talk to them about who I actually am. So that's generally my perspective on this. I'm going to talk to them regarding who I actually am. So everything about me, this is me, this is who I am, I'm a soul bonder, but I'm still coming to terms with the fact that I am a soul bonder in a specific way that I never thought was the case. <laughs> I haven't really digested that, I'm still fully processing it, but <laughs> In general, I think a lot of people are going to give me a lot of criticism over how many soap bonders, I mean, how many soap bonds I have. And okay, I get it. It's hard to believe that someone can have so many soap bonds, but I mean, I, I am weird, okay? And I'm also isolated a lot. You really think I can just deal with things like a normal person when I'm isolated to hell and back? When I was, when I was in school, I was very lonely and isolated and I dealt with that shit with my imagination. <laughs> and I didn't realize that soul bonding was a, was a thing, but it really, what, it really did make a difference in my life. And I think that for a lot of people, they don't really understand why soap bonding would create something so meaningful. They wouldn't necessarily understand because they've just never really experienced it. They don't understand why soap bonding is a thing. They don't understand how something like this is possible. And quite frankly, I'm not really... A per I'm not really a scientific expert on this subject, so I can't tell you. But I can tell you what I believe about it, my experiences, and things like that. And I think it's a good idea to be open-minded when it comes to this kind of stuff. Because we don't know everything there is to know about the universe. We're still making scientific discoveries. We're still doing all sorts of things that is perfectly normal for scientific stuff, you know? 
if we don't know everything, we're probably never going to know everything, and that's fine. We don't have to. It's just important to respect what other people believe, because quite frankly, you never know what kind of things that experience is bringing to that person's life. You don't know what kind of meaning that person is being given by having those experiences. And I think that by being a self bonder to the specific extent that I am, I believe that I've got a lot going for me in that regard because I've got so much experience. And now do I believe that as a self bonder I should, uh, I should be a bit more understanding of people that aren't? Well, yes, of course. I should be more understanding of that. That's why I'm planning... Uh, that's why these videos haven't come out yet, because I still have to... Uh, I still have to think about this. How, how do I want to present this content in a way that I believe will actually explain it in a way that most people can actually understand and comprehend it. It's not about being disrespectful, of course. It's about understanding that my experiences aren't common. And not a lot of people have, have heard of it. They haven't had enough time to adjust to the fact that it's a thing. So really, it's just a thing, you know? I have to understand that not everyone knows what it is, number one. And number two, things are different when it comes to many things. Like, for example, there's a reason that so bonding isn't often reflected on positively. It's gotten a bad rep from people misusing it and doing it and using it to cause harm to others and i definitely do want to acknowledge the negative side of things and why so bonding has received so much criticism so i can better cover that side as well as my own experiences but i think it's also important to recognize that so bonding has brought a lot of change to my life and i don't really think that it's a bad idea to be open to the possibility that it is possible to interact with that many spirits. Yes, I know it's weird, I know it's going to sound weird, but it is indeed possible. Although I wouldn't have believed it was possible months ago. Wait, wait, was it actually months ago? Yeah, it's still months ago, it's not November yet. Yeah, in November, a lot of things changed, as far as things go, yeah, um, in November, I just wrote whatever came to mind, and it was really a life-changing experience when it came to soul bonding, but honestly, I don't necessarily want to talk about that at the moment. I just wanted to give people an update on how I'm doing with this journey. And where I am. I haven't fully accepted myself yet, but I think I'm starting to get there gradually and over time. And I hope that as I get there, my content improves along with that. So guys, that's going to wrap things up for this one year review. I have uploaded videos on YouTube for a year now. For a year! That's ridiculous. But I will be here for more years, as long as YouTube doesn't destroy me. I don't trust it, but please don't destroy me, YouTube. I'm trying to have fun. Anyway, guys, again, that's going to wrap things up for the one-year review. I hope to have another video about this topic come out soon. But I don't know how soon that means. 